Hello, this is Peter B. And this is another edition of Tobacco Card Tuesday. Uh, this morning, I went into my box of tobacco cards, randomly pulled three, and uh, let's look at them. The first one is Smokey Joe Wood of the Boston Red Sox. This is a 1912 T207 Brownback. And pretty much all the players in this set had this brown background, as you see here. And there were different brands of cigarettes. This one's Recruit, probably the most common. There were a couple of other brands. Okay, Joe Wood had an amazing but short career as a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. He dominated his opponents in the 1911 and 1912 seasons, winning 57 games, including a no-hitter no and winning 16 straight games. Ty Cobb said, Joe Wood was one of the best pitchers I ever faced throughout my entire career. When a reporter asked fastballer Walter Johnson if he could throw hotter than Joe Wood, he answered, Listen, mister, no man alive can throw hotter than Smokey Joe Wood. In 1912, a Boston reporter remarked, Gee, that boy throws smoke. Thus the name Smokey Joe Wood was born. Very good pitcher, but also started having little nagging injuries. And they began to build up during his years with Boston. His final start of the season in 1915, he left the mound clinging to his left shoulder in pain. Joe sat out the 1916 season due to contract issues with the Red Sox and also to tend his ailing um, arm. In February 1917, he was sold to Cleveland, and Joe announced his arm was as good as ever, but it wasn't. He was shelled by the other teams he faced and had an 0-1 record after five games. Doctor looked at his, at his arm and said, it's a wonder you have any arm left. Joe is done as a pitcher. The Indian owner offered to keep him and use him in an advisory role, but Joe took himself off the payroll and went home. But Joe was not done with baseball. He knew he could no longer pitch, so he converted himself into an outfielder. In 1918, he did come back to Cleveland and hit 296 for the season, which is pretty good. He played outfield for the Indians until 1922 and even hit 400 in Cleveland's win over Brooklyn in the 1920 World Series. His uh, pitching record is 117 and 57 a 2.03 ERA, 989 Ks. His batting record is a .283 average, 23 home runs, and .768 OPS. Now, I remember buying this card I used to be a member of SABER, Society for American Baseball Research. And there was a older man at the at every meeting. And he would set up a little table and sell things, mostly Joe Wood items. Um, that man was Robert Wood, 
Joe Wood's son. And I bought this off him. Uh, so I don't know whether this was in Joe Wood's collection, which must have been at some point, or whether Robert collected it because it was of his father. But the age of the card and the age of the two Woods leads me to believe this is probably in Joe Wood's collection. Robert Wood was a nice guy. You also see him at uh, baseball card shows selling a lot of his father's items and stupid me I wasn't into autographs at that time and he's had a lot of like canceled bank checks and things like that and I never bought one uh Robert Wood has long since passed and now if I was to get one it'd be big money but I wish I grabbed a uh auto of Smokey Joe so that's the first card I grabbed. T207. Smokey Joe Wood, the Boston Red Sox. Okay, the next card is Tim Jordan of T206. And from 1909 to 1911. And he is with the Brooklyn team. Tim Jordan played baseball 1909 to 1911. First baseman, Tim Jordan played seven seasons for the Washington Senators, New York Highlanders, later Yankees, and Brooklyn Suburbas, later Dodgers. He led the league as a rookie in home runs in 1906, becoming the first ever rookie to do so. Since then, Mark McGuire and Pete Alonso also have been rookies who led the league in home runs. Jordan also had a second home run title, and I believe it was 1908. Jordan also created a baseball-themed card game called TJ Jordan Indoor Card Game. You would pick a card and advance or get called out depending on what card you had. Game came in a box with Jordan's photo on it, swinging a bat. There were 72 playing cards determined the result of the play, a small playing field, score cards, and wooden discs that would be the runners you would move around the bases. Joe... Um, I mean, Tim Jordan's seven-year career is 261 batting average, 32 home runs, and .737 OPS. Now, I bought this card a while ago because I love the colors. I mean, look at that. Look at the green on the grass and then the uh, blue to pink hues as the sunset. A nice uh, Brooklyn blue cap on them. I love the I love this card and that's why I bought it. This one happens to be a sweet caporal back. Now good and bad things about doing these videos. Good thing is you learn about the players on the car. Like, I never knew he was the first guy to be a rookie and win the home run title. I never knew he created a little indoor baseball game while he was a player. Bad news is I never knew he created an indoor baseball game as a player. So, of course, I have to go to eBay, look for the cards, and there were a few there, and I bought one. So... When it comes, hopefully for next week's Tobacco Tuesday, I will show you Tim Jordan's card again real quick and show you a playing card from his game. Oh, and the reason that's bad news is because you spend money. <laughs> money I would have otherwise kept, but I do get to add a new card to my collection, which is the good news. Okay, the third card I picked... Now, I have this with my baseball tobacco cards. I have a lot of non-sport tobacco cards as well. 
But this is from a famous set. It was a multi-sport set, and it has uh, very nice baseball players. Matter of fact, last week I showed you um, John Ward from the set. And the set being the 1888 N28 Allen and Ginter. Well, here is a, another card from that set. And it's Annie Oakley. So this is a multi-sport set. And I guess uh, shooting was a sport. Even though she made it more into an entertainment. Backs are the same as the baseball players. And it shows all these sports that are involved in the set. Nice card out Annie Oakley. They also have a Buffalo Bill. I would like to get that someday as well, but I would rather have Annie Oakley first. She's cooler. Okay, Annie Oakley. Oakley was born in 1860 as Phoebe Ann Moses. At age of 15, uh, experienced marksman Frank E. Butler was coming to town to show off his shooting ability. And he challenged the town before he got there to put up their best uh, shooter and have a contest against that shooter. Well, when he got to town, the best shooter in town was waiting for him. And it was five foot, 15 year old little Annie Oakley. And at first, he didn't know what to think about that. Well, they had the contest, and sure enough, Annie Oakley beat Frank Butler. And it must not have felt too bad, though, because later they got married in 1876. The pair joined Buffalo Bill's Wild West show in 1885, and she created the stage name of Annie Oakley. Oakley became the star of the show, traveling around the U.S. and Europe. Sitting Bull was also in the Buffalo Bill show, and he came to be good friends with Oakley. He gave her the nickname Little Sure, Little sure Shot. Um, she did many trick shots behind the back, looking in a mirror, um, throwing a playing card up and hitting it right on the edge and things like that. Very, very well marksman. But she also taught over 15,000 women how to use a gun. She believed women should know how to use a gun for both physical and mental exercise, as well as learning how to defend themselves. So Annie Oakley is the third and final card on this Tobacco Card Tuesday. I thank you very much for watching. And please like. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And better yet, comment. I'm not getting many comments, so uh, I, li I like reading the comments. Thank you.